not your special. This is church's special. Is that all right? So you can do your special. We do our own. Glory be to God's name. No, that is for dominant voices. Now they do our own as a church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For three minutes, let's do it one more time. Hallelujah. Everybody shout hallelujah. Woo! Praise is the highway to the throne of God. Praise is the hard way to the heart of God. Praise is the highway for the move of God. God will move on your behalf before this month ends. God will move on your behalf before this year ends. God will move because everyone will hear your praises and it will cause God to move on your behalf in the name of Jesus. If you are here this morning, you are certain that heavens will move. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. You know. If you give him that kind of praise, nothing will stop him from moving. So if you know you are going to give him that kind of praise between now and the end of this year, so he will move. So if you know that he will move on your behalf before this year end, give the Lord a shout where you are. Give the Lord a shout where you are. Give the Lord a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. In Jesus' mighty name. You know why that is symbolic? You know that why that is symbolic? The wall of Jericho fell by the shout of God's people. The wall was the hindrance between God's people and their destiny. So I know that every wall of Jericho between you and God's purpose for your life, to this morning, they are falling flat in the name of Jesus. 
every plan of the devil, opposition of the devil, calculations of hell against your life, they are falling flat in the name of Jesus. Those that say that you will not have peace, in the mighty name of Jesus, their thought, their calculations, their imaginations have just fallen flat in the name of Jesus. And those that have thought that this is all about you, you will not amount to nothing. You will not amount to anything. Those that have written you off in the mighty name of Jesus, their expectation is already disappointed. In the mighty name of Jesus, praise move God. As you offer him the sacrifice of praise at this season that we are in, nothing will stop God from moving on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. Some people will trigger the move of God this year. Generations after them will continue to experience. I'm talking about their children, their children, their children, their children. We continue to see the move of God all around in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. I want to welcome us in Jesus' precious name. You may take your seat. I also want to welcome everybody online in Jesus' precious name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are also going to be pointing this anointing and grace in everything, especially the L of coronavirus. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are immune against this devilish virus in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are inoculated against this virus. The blood of Jesus shall prevail. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, I thank you this morning. I thank you for the entrance of your word that brings light. Cause that light to be shed into every darkness in our lives. Cause your light to extinguish every activity of the power of darkness. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, destroy every hold of the agent of the devil militating against anyone's life in any shape or form by the power of your word this morning. Lord, do that which only you can do in the name of Jesus. Return back to sender every arrow of evil in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. We are going to get into the word of the Lord. I'm speaking on the miracle power of praise, part two. The miracle power of praise. Many, a few years ago, I was in a car with uh, Dr. My Mudok, and he just started talking. Sometimes when you hang around some great people, they just keep talking. You, you, there is no order. You just see them, they just have a topic. Pay attention to those things. And most likely, it's inspired by the Holy Ghost. He said, there is a path to a man's heart. There is a path to everybody's heart. He said, to everybody, there is a what to do. There is a button to press that triggers them. There is a path. It is wisdom for wives to know the path to their husband's heart. It is wisdom for husbands to know the path to their wife's heart. It is wisdom for parents to know the path to their children's heart. It is wisdom for children to know the path. In other words, the thing that you will do, that you will get the result that you need from them. He said, there is a path, Dr. Maimudok was speaking. There is a path. I was talking to a couple about two years ago, over an issue. And what came up in that conversation was that the wife said, I had some things, requests to make. He said, but before I bring them up, I have an assignment I need to. He said, don't worry, let me do what I need to do, then I'll bring you the list. So she understood the path. And that path differs from people to people. Some people, you just spend two, three, you, you spend a couple of times with them. You may not say nothing. Just hang around them. You're going to get some results. 
Some people, you know what triggers them. Everybody does. That scripture says, that song says, praise is the highway for to the throne of God. Praise is the highway to the heart of God. Praise is the highway to the move of God. Now, it is not wise for you to uh, try to assess a man with something else or without the trigger of the path to their heart. Is somebody hearing me? If you are going to maximize your result, I have shared this with you several times. This happened in the year 2002. We just moved to, I just moved to, we just moved to Georgia. I moved by myself at that point, and uh, I was staying with the outgoing pastor. It was a 67, 69 he said, what was this nine year old man? And I was staying in his house. So we spent a lot of time together. We'll go to a restaurant together. We'll do stuff together. It was the one I was taking over from. And one day, the granddaughter came to the house and started rubbing his head. And three of us were there, myself, himself, and the granddaughter. The granddaughter wasn't staying with them, but she'd come every week. So he started she started rubbing the head of this old man. Started rubbing the head. And I was looking. I was my first time of seeing this. Then the old man looked at me, he said, he said, Pastor, don't you think I'm in trouble? <laughs> I said, which trouble? Can't you see? I said, how is that in trouble? She just showed you love. She said, love? He said, love? He said, by the end of it, you will know I'm in trouble. He said, when a woman rubs your head, you are going to pay the price. He said, Pastor, I said, how? He said, watch. We will see where this will land. The guy said, oh, grandpa, take it easy. Can't I just, I miss you. The guy said, hmm, another problem. You miss me? You came last weekend. He said, well, I thought about you all week. <laughs> the, first, the, his name, the pastor's name is Pastor White. You're a great guy from Jamaica. He said, he said, pastor, I'm in deep trouble. The guy said, oh, I just love you, grandpa. I just love you, grandpa. Okay. The rubbing of the head ended. We were talking. Then we had dinner. The girl was about to leave. Oh, everybody see you. Tell grandma I came. Bye. She got to the door. Then she came back. Then she pulled out the paper. <laughs> then she showed to the grandpa. What happened? She had missed two payments of her car. <laughs> <laughs> she had missed two pay payments. So, <laughs> the man took it and gave it to me. <laughs> He said, didn't I tell you that this is not free? <laughs> when a woman is rubbing your head, reach out for your checkbook. <laughs> he, he said, write something before they tell you the amount. <laughs> Glory be to God's name. There is a path to everyone's heart. I said that to stamp something in your heart. Praise is a path to God's heart. When God sees praise, he's going to write a check. Praise. Praise, number one, is a spiritual miracle agent. Praise is deeper than, oh, we give God praise. When we're talking about God, praise is a miracle agent. Because that's what God does when he sees praise. God does miracles. Praise is a guarantee for God's manifest presence. Let me tell you something this morning. Everything we are asking for in God will only be done in his manifest presence. Because the presence of God is the anointing, is God's power. So his manifest presence is where God moves, where he manifests himself. That's what praise ushers in. In 2 Chronicles, very popular story of Jehoshaphat, the Bible says, when they began to sing, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 22, when they began to sing, the Lord set ambushes against their enemies because they began to sing. They began to give God's praise. And their enemies, the Bible said, they were defeated. God set ambushes as they began to sing. So God does miracle 
when God sees praise from his people. Now, the three nations that came together, that gang up against Jehoshaphat and his people, now they now, they, they, they now destroy one another. They destroy themselves. So now, allies now became foes. They became enemies. People that came together. Do you know what that tells me? On the platform of praise, God can dismantle every gang up against your life. God can dismantle any man or woman that combine together to do something to pull you down. As they began to praise, the allies became enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, and I declare this morning that every gang up of evil against your life will be dismantled. They will become foes. They will fight themselves on the ground and the platform of your praise this year in the name of Jesus. That's a mystery of divine intervention because Jehoshaphat and his people, they gave praise. So praise is a proven and a tested spiritual platform for miracles. Before this year end, your whole miracle will be in your hand tangibly. Now, leading to that story is verse 12, Second Chronicles chapter 20, the same chapter, verse 12. They had cried unto God, Oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes upon you. In case you are here this morning, that looks like your situation. The war against you is unsolicited. The war against you is not what you want. The gang up against you is not what you deserve. And you don't know what to do. You feel like your back is against the wall. That is what happened to, the, to Jehoshaphat and his people. But, the Bible says, as they praise. So, praise is what to do when your back is against the wall. In the mighty name of Jesus, every of such battles against your life, in the natural, in the spiritual, the one against your marriage, against your children, against your career, against your destiny, against everything that you stand for. We fall flat on the ground of praise in the name of Jesus. They did not know to do. That's a prayer of almost, oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power. We can't withstand these people. These people are so formidable. There is nothing we can do our, on our own. They have come against us again. He said, but our eyes upon you. When you are turning the battles of your life unto God, the next thing for you to do is to begin to praise. Praise turns the battle to God. Praise brings God into the battle. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost said something to me early this morning. I woke up with the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I'm, I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to add it to all the instruction. Every member of Dominion Life, hear what God asked me to tell you. From now, you, before you begin to do your 10 minutes of praise, read Psalms chapter 3. Then you begin to praise. The Holy Ghost spoke this into my breath early this morning. You read chapter 3. Then you begin to observe your daily 10 minutes prayer, which is going to take us to the end of this year, and God will intervene in Jesus' name. So now the question is this, why is praise a pathway to God's heart? Or why is praise is the highway to the move of God, to the heart of God, and to the throne of God? Why is praise all of this we're talking about? Why? Number one is because praise ushers in divine presence, as we know. Praise. God can be present and don't manifest himself. Is somebody hearing me? So you want to see God's power? God, get God there. God cannot be present and not, nobody can stop him from manifesting. All you need to do is to get him there. So because praise ushers in God's manifest presence, 
Psalms 22 and verse 30, but you are holy and throne in the presence of his people. So God comes and builds his throne when he sees his praise. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we proclaim you are king as we stand in the midst of us. We lift you up with our prayers as we worship Reserve that song for me to the end of the service. Reserve it. Okay. Thank glory be to God's name. God builds his throne in the worship of his people. And we're talking about his manifest presence. If you can sustain his presence, you may never have to say anything about your prayer request. In his presence, he manifests himself. Thank you, Jesus. Please have that song for me. Hallelujah. But you are holy and true in the place of Israel. The Amplified says, but you are holy. Oh, you would dwell in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. So the place of, the place of praise is an holy place. God comes there and dwells there. So, number one reason why praise is the highway to God's throne is because it brings his presence. Number two, why is a place to be is because it's on the ground on, on the platform of praise that we receive divine revelation or direction. And I'm going to tell you why that is important. We receive revelation or direction through praise. Now, every answer to our prayers our concerns is in direction of revelation of what to do. When you look at everything in your mind right now, everything you see God's face for, the answer mostly is going to be, what should I do? How do I approach this thing? Praise brings divine revelation. In 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 14, there was a story there and Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand surely, where he know that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I will not look at you nor see you. Now bring me a musician. Then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. Now, they were going to fight a, a, a battle, if you read the story from the beginning. They were going to fight a war. Then they ran out of water. Water to fill their donkeys, their animals, their weapons of war. No, and they were in the valley. No way to, no, no way. They didn't know what to do. But the man of God said, we need a direction. Even me as a man of God, I can pray, but we need God to tell us what to do. But God is going to speak faster if we offer him praise. Let somebody play something. The Bible says, as the musician began to play, then God began to speak. Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that your cattle and your animals may drink. And that's what happened. So praise gives access to we complain too much and we chalk God's voice out of our lives. You are never not going to hear the voice of God with a complaining heart. You know, we pray, God, what are you saying? Speak to me. But we is on the bed of complaint and murmuring, on a grumbling heart. Yes, you know what to do. Now, when you complain, God never speaks. God speaks in an atmosphere of worship. 
an atmosphere. Now, Elisha, Elisha, for goodness sake, Elisha, prophet Elisha, got to a point that he needed somebody to play. So this tells me Elisha spent all his whole life at home worshiping God. Now they were in the valley. He said, bring, I don't have my musician. Say, I don't have my stuff here. Let somebody find me somebody to play. God is going to speak. And God spoke. So praise is the highway to God's throne because inside praise there is divine revelation, which is the answer to most of our prayers. Divine revelation can come into a way. God can give you spiritual assignment. It can give you practical assignment. God can give you a practical assignment. What to do, steps to take. In Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 29, you shall have a song as in the night when a, a holy festival is kept and gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute. So, you know what that is saying? Thank you, Jesus. In other words, you are going to be making melody within yourself. He said, the gladness of your heart will be ringing like somebody is playing music. You, you feel so much joy, so much out of rejoicing and praise that you are going to be hearing in your own spirit, within yourself, it will sound like Shola is playing. So, you can come with a heart of praise. Within yourself, people of God, the drummers can be there. The keyboardists can be there. The singers can be there. All the instrumentalists can be there. By yourself, somebody is playing something. Say, as in the night, night when you are by yourself, when a holy festival is kept, when you do it as a practice, and gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute. Then you come to the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. Now he says, the Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. <laughs> you make music for the Lord, God will cause his own glorious voice to be heard. Is going to speak. The voice of God is the greatest treasure for every believer. You lack it, you lack the treasure of Christianity. He said, The Lord will cause, is God will always speak when you give Him praise. People of God, and to be honest with you, I've experienced that before several times when I'm by myself. And honestly, I'm hearing everything. 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 Then I have instrumentals of worship. I have it on my iPad. It's on my phone. It's on my cloud. It's everywhere. I don't need all my effect to worship the Lord. Just put something on. I, sometimes I play the whole flight. Five, six hours flight. Because when you are stuck, especially when you are stuck in a place you can't escape. You turn into a time of seeking God's presence, of being in God's presence. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the descent of his harm. Now he now says, with the indignation of his hunger and the flame of a divine fire, with scattering tempest and a stone. From somebody's worship. For through the voice of the Lord, Assyria will be beaten down as, he, as God strike with the rod. So you can strike down every opposition against your life. You can fight. How you are fighting that battle is not how to fight it, people of God. Get God involved in it. There is no need to get mad. What we do is that we get mad. Don't get mad. Get into praise. When you get into praise, your enemy is in trouble because God is going to take it over. You will always know what to do if you don't stop giving God praise. You will always know because He will cause His glorious voice to be heard. Because God always knows the way forward. And in the journey of life as a Christian, 
Revelation is your greatest asset. Revelation, what to do, what next to take, how to take the step. Why? Because all, most of the challenges and prayer we are praying, they are things we got into because we didn't hear God. And Satan's greatest asset against the believer is ignorance. The ignorance on the part of the Christian. I said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Satan is only relevance at the absence of light. Satan's relevance is at the absence of light. At the absence of revelation, you shall know the truth, the truth about the situation, what God says, and you shall be free. Revelation, which means God, how do we do it? What it is? This is what I'm feeling, but what it is exactly. And God is saying, this is what it is. Not how I feel. Now, talking about revelation, about which is very, very important. Let, let me touch. What are the covenant channels for revelation? We might need this. Let me digress a little bit. How do we receive divine revelation? Listen again. Revelation is your greatest asset as a Christian. Revelation is your, adva is your advantage over the unbeliever. Revelation is your advantage. It's the hedge. It's something that you have that they don't have or they can't access. It's your greatest access. What to do? When God opens up everything, you see everything, you see what it is. In John chapter 16, verse 12. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and reveal my secret to you. Talking about the Holy Ghost. Number one channel of revelation, undisputable, is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So when we say, believers, you must be Christian, you should rush to the Holy Ghost baptism class so that you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost because without the Holy Ghost, now, God speaks by his Spirit. Every time somebody says God spoke, the Holy Spirit has spoken. The Holy Spirit is God's mouthpiece. Without being filled with the Holy Ghost, you can hear God. So number one channel of assessing divine revelation is the ministry of the Holy Ghost. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. This is the body. But you are a spirit that carries, you are, you are, you are a spirit that is carried in a body. So your body carries your soul and your spirit. Your soul is your intellect. Now, this is what feeds from emotion what you see. Your spirit is what puts God in you. So when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, a life of a spirit is born. When, when, you, when you give your life to Jesus, a, your life in the spirit is born. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, then the spirit comes alive. The Holy Ghost... It's number one channel of hearing from God, illumination of the Holy Spirit. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, your access to divine revelation is limited. You can even read it, I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? If I feel with the Holy Ghost, read the chapter of the Bible. Tell an unbeliever to read it. Tell the unbeliever to tell you everything he got from it. And then you look at what you get from it you realize that the Holy Spirit is an illuminant. By the time you are saying your own, the young people will be looking, did we read the same thing? That's what the Holy, Holy Ghost does. This reminds me many, <laughs> many years ago. I'm going to make a mess with somebody now. Uh, Dick and Daddy just came to the church that time. And uh, he said, you can ask him after the service. Yeah. Uh, I make him say it every now and then. He said... He was wowed by the song. He said, but because he's a musician himself, he said he put that on the side. He said, but 
when I started ministering, this was in 2007 or something. He said, as I started ministering the word, he said, because he was a Bible teacher himself, he said, he said is this from the same Bible? <laughs> we did talk about it not too long ago, and he said, he said, he said, I said, is it from the same Bible? I mean, I'm a Bible teacher. That's what the Holy Spirit does, illumination. One of my wonderful sons is here, was asking me just last weekend. He said the word is getting deeper and deeper and deeper these days. He said, is it by anointing or by spending time? <laughs> I said both. I said you spend hours, 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 hours. This message was ready last night. But I couldn't sleep. I woke up at 1 a.m., sat with it again. Doing what? Reading it. Cross-referencing scripture. Asking the Holy Ghost, what does this mean? There were some of the things that I just found out early this morning. The work of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is number one channel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. How many of you realize that last Friday, the night of miracle, and this morning I'm talking slowly? The Holy Ghost told me Friday afternoon. He told me categorically. I mean, he told me you are stubborn, you are everything I've told you before. So you have to take it easy. Glory be to God. Now, now, we have received not, not the spirit of the world, 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 12, but the spirit who is from God that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Listen, without the Holy Ghost, you don't even have an understanding of your inheritance in God. Without the help of the Holy Ghost, you lack the human capacity. Human intellect will not reveal your inheritance in God to you. He said, these things we also speak, not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. That is the reason, the difference between us and theologians. Theologians, they just believe in theology. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive these things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness to him. And I continue to say, don't ever find yourself arguing scripture with an unbeliever. Unless they are filled with the Holy Ghost, they can't come on your page. They are foolishness to them. So it is not their fault. They don't understand it. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. How do you make somebody that is not spiritual understand the things of the spirit? So this is what the Holy Ghost does in our life. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 to 8. Number one, without the help of the Holy Ghost, traditions and religions will hinder or confuse your understanding. In Colossians 2, 6 to 8, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. He says, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of this world, and not according to Christ. There are basic principles of this world. There are traditions of this world that people still quote. Christians, there are things not in the Bible that people quote. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. There are things people quote. I mean, if you have heard me say something here, I say it's not in the Bible, I'm just quoting it. There are things people live by, and they quote it because it's a quote, without knowing where it came from. In most cases, contrary to revelation of Scripture, but because it's a quotable that has always been there, they quote it, they live by it. I, I, I have had many growing up. He said, don't let anybody deceive you. So without the help of the Holy Ghost, 
you cannot leave these traditions behind. So, Holy Ghost helps you to be able to accommodate, understand the revelation, the mystery of the, of the kingdom. In John chapter 14 and verse 16, John 14, John 14, 26, I beg your pardon. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Ghost is a master illuminant. The Holy Ghost is an agent of illumination. The Holy Ghost is an angel of understanding. The Holy Ghost is a teacher. Without the Holy Ghost, you can't go deep in the revelation of God. It takes the Holy Ghost for you to hear a revelation and even receive it. Because the same way you receive it, some people had it, they can't receive it because there is no illuminance in them. So, the channel of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our master access to light and to revelation. All of us know something. They are, all of us have a preconception of anything. How many of us understand that? I mean, for, we understand these things. All of us have something. So, Holy Ghost have to come in and overthrow those things. Without the Holy Ghost, those things are entrenched in our heart. And we live by them. Number three or two, I, I, I digress. Number two, I, I just digress on channels of revelation. Now, number two, to work, be able to walk in revelation, the help of the Holy Ghost, or, 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 or revelation of the Holy Ghost, you must have the heart of meekness. You cannot walk, you cannot receive from the Holy Ghost without a meek heart. M-E-E-K. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 29. Come to me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest, all of you. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. It takes meekness to assess divine revelation. Without the spirit of meekness, meekness, your intellectualism will hinder the operation of God in your life. It is absence of the spirit of meekness. That's what makes us struggle to receive revelation. Because the you in you is rising against this fresh idea. You would call it idea. Maybe it's a revelation of the Holy Ghost or this new thing. When the move of God started in Africa, or let me say in Nigeria that I know of many years ago, maybe over 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when Pentecostalism came, and it became so, the gospel of Jesus became, now it was termed new religion. And even every Christian known where they serve God faithfully, they were hostile to it, because it's something new. Number one, there is no Christian dress code. Number two, they speak in tongue too much. <laughs> Number three, this confession thing was very alien to them. To just say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The old, the old Christians, they don't do that. It's in their hearts. They never understood the mystery of confession. I don't know if I understand what I'm trying to say. I don't know if us know what I'm saying. So you know very well. They are very sincere, very loyal. Sir, is that a Christian when you gave your life to Jesus many, many years ago, decades ago, and now you saw things changing? So the body of Christ, even then, were hostile to it. Then, to finish it, they said they are prosperity church. That's how to, that's the soccer punch. Once they make it look like it's all about money, they dis to them, they are discrediting the move of God. They say it's prosperity church. But the Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he became poor so that you can become rich. So Jesus died so that you can be rich. 
So, so to be rich is part of the blessing of redemption. So how come is a liability? There are many countries today that are still coming up in the faith that want to discredit a Christian. You, you announce that he's a prosperity preacher. They won't go there. Somebody ran for the presidency in South Africa. The, not this election cycle, the last election cycle, the one before the last. And one of these guys was uh, a Christian that is a member of Living Faith, Baptist Church in South Africa. What the opponent posed in the media all over the country was picture of Papa. They said, this is his pastor. He has a private jet. So the person that you want to vote for, his pastor is prosperous. He's a prosperity pastor. So they're now showing Papa's picture. So I'm trying to tell you how the mind and religion tradition. Now, how is that a crime? When we were doing a uh, food bank in Oakland, I don't know if many of you witnessed this. We had a lot of people from, <laughs> I don't know whether to say where they came. <laughs> okay, let me say our brethren from China. <laughs> a lot of people from Asia, from China, right? So we got a Chinese interpreter. I'm talking about religion. We got a Chinese interpreter who were pastors. I'm not first there. Is that right? You, see, you remember them? Husband and wife, pastors. They are home pastor. Pastor in the Chinese church in Oakland. To be interpreting why we are speaking to them at food bank. And half of the people we were feeding were Chinese people. Then I made a rule that all the volunteers, everybody that serve at food bank, they should also give them supplies. We had more than enough supplies. We never finish our supplies. After food bank is over, we see turkey, we see chicken, we see fish, fresh fish all over the freezer. And we're going to re re uh, uh, restock again in a couple of days. So I said, everybody, as long as they serve, let them take something. The Chinese people, they rose against their pastor and his wife because, because they are pastor, they are not supposed to take from it. And it became a fight on our grounds. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, religion. Now, it's their own pastor in their own church. But in their own mentality, because you are called as a pastor, you, your life must resemble poverty. Now, the food was free. The pastor's portion didn't hinder their own. The pastors didn't receive more than them. Everybody the same portion. Now, they had been grumbling among themselves. Then it became an open revolt on our ground. Their home pastor that, that they, don't, they, don't, they didn't come to our church. Every Sunday, the pastor is preaching to them. But because he's a pastor, he can't take food. Hallelujah. So, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, the Bible says, But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It looks so simple. It looks so... It doesn't make too much sense. He said, but I fear. Said, I will tell you, this is too simple. This doesn't make sense. So the message of the gospel of Jesus is so simple that the intellect will confuse it for stupidity. Psalms 119. No one, the Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 30. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. When your word enters, light comes. Understanding comes. And in Psalms 25 and verse 9, the humble, he guides in justice. And the humble, he teaches his way. So the more humble you are, the more access you have to revelation and meekness. If you have pride in your heart, there is a roadblock 
to your access to revelation. Pride is an hindrance to revelation. Because God will even tell you to do something that you will look stupid to everybody and to yourself. The humble he guides in justice, the humble he teaches his way. The proud have no access to light because the proud believes they can figure everything out. But God works more with the meek. So it takes meekness to acknowledge, number one, that you are limited in knowledge. Without meekness, you are not receptive to understanding. You are not ready to learn nothing. And in Psalms 25 and verse 12, he says, Who is the man that fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in his way, in the way he chooses, the way God chooses. God is going to make choices for them. So destroy your pride so that a revelation can come and God can take you to your promised land. Bury your pride. Number three, Number three, channels of divine revelation. The love of God. In other words, your love for God determines the depth of what God shows you. How deep you are in, with God determines how deep God reveals things to you. So without the love of God, God tells you nothing. No one confines in someone that doesn't love them. Is that right? You know who you are going to confide your life? You, you, somebody that has antagonized all your life. You now call them and say, you see, I, this thing has been my mind. Nobody knows it about me. When I was born, I beg you to tell them your deep secret. No. You only entrust your secret into the hands of those that love you. God only entrust revelation and knowledge to you by the depth of your love. Let me stop by saying this. You have to check yourself. The fact that you are a Christian, you may, it may not mean because you love God. So it's wanting to be a Christian. Of course we love God, that's why we come. But check if you really love him. Number one, if God stop answering prayer today, will you still be loving him? If you no longer have prayer requests and prayer outlines, things to pray for, will you still be loving him? Then you say, yes, I love him. What does it cost you? Love always have to have a cost. Love is not valid without a cost. So serving God, what is it costing you? That's how you are going to measure your love unto him. The deeper your love for God, the more he holds you in confidence of his secret. Let's look at David, for example. David, the Bible says, was a man after God's heart. And let's see what happened. In 1 Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart. God, the prophet was telling uh, Saul. And the Lord has commanded him to be commander over his people because you have not kept the word of the Lord. Which he commanded, he talking about talking to Saul. So the man after his heart, which has love, is David. Now, what, is, what did David know to show that God revealed himself to people that love him? Number one, David knew hundreds of years before the coming of the Lord about redemption. God entrusted salvation package, the entire salvation project of humanity, God had revealed it unto David. Thousands of years before Jesus was to come. So he loved God so much that God was speaking things that would happen thousands of years when he, was, he will be dead. God was telling me, I know you won't be alive that time, but I'm going to do this to the world. God's number one project in the world. He entrusted it into David. Let's see. In the Bible says in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2 and verse 29. Acts 2, 29. Men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the patriarch David, that is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. That's just a digression. The tomb of David is still being visited till now. 
But it says, therefore, David, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. So God had told him, he loved God so much, and God told him, I am going to redeem the world. I have a redemption package to the world. I have another plan. And I will entrust that Messiah who will come from your lineage. He entrusted his own only son to come at the DNA of David. He loved God so much. Now, in other words, God was looking all over the world. You know, God is not limited in resources. So God searched carefully. Who should I entrust? Who should I give this honor? Who is going to be the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus? He needs to come in human flesh. From which country? Which people? Which color? Which tribe there? Eh? Which family? They found David. And the Bible says, he was a man after God's heart. And God can't make mistake. So David's love for God towered above any, anything, anybody has called love anywhere towards God. Now he goes on to say, he, that is David, foreseen this, spoke concerning the resurrection of the Christ. That Jesus' soul was not left in age. Nor did his flesh see corruption. So he prophesied this, David, ahead of time. <laughs> if you are talking about secret, that is secret. That is trust and trusted. God entrusted him with the secret of redemption. So the more you love God, the deeper your heart says to the things of God. And let's look at Paul. Because Paul was another man of deep revelation. Because some religious man can say that's in the whole testament. Let me tell you something, people of God. Never get yourself into that argument and say something is the whole testament is not valid. It is the lie of the devil. It is a tradition of men. Now, New Testament is a fulfillment of what was prophesied and the journey in the Old Testament. Otherwise, you are invalidating Isaiah, David, and all of them. You are invalidating the family of Jesus. Talking about Paul, Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Now, Paul was testifying that all these things can, can separate me. I can't stop loving God no matter what. No, I, I asked earlier on that, do you love God? Now, can challenges and tribulation and distress move you away from God? Can you slow down when things are not the way they should be? This is what Paul was saying here. So he declared boldly that nothing can stop him from, from God's love. Now, the same Paul now wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. So he didn't know how to quantify the revelation, the depth of what he got in God. It's an abundance of revelation. Glory be to God. And in 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10. But as it is written, high has not seen or hear heard. Now have entered into the heart of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. There are some secret that he package only for some people that love him. He said, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So by his spirit, he said, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The deep things of God reserved for those that truly love him. The question is that, where is your thermometer of love towards God? What is the measure of your love towards God? 
Are you just doing a religious thing, just go to church, or you actually love him? They say, when I love him, what does it cost you? Are you serving God only when it is convenient? Because that's a cost. If your service unto God is only what is convenient, when it's convenient, you may not love him, people of God. Because people pay prices to go be with somebody that they love. And lastly, as I rush to the end, another channel of revelation or direction or light is covenant relationship. Because the Bible says in Psalms 36 and verse 9, for with you is the fountain of life, in your light we see light. For with you is the fountain of life, in your light you see light. There are relationships that help you see. There is no self-made man on earth. Every great man or woman is a product of another. There are people you work with that make you see more. You are a reflection of people that have your ears. Not our people you listen to. My prayer is that you will walk in the wisdom to give your ears only to those that will make you see well. There are some people that will confuse your vision. But there are some people that will brighten your vision. In your light, we say light. There are people you walk with, your life will never remain the same. There are people you walk with, your light will be skipping, 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 skipping until you get on the right path. Covenant relationship. Isaac Newton, the English scientist, philosopher, and everything. He said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders, shoulders of giants. All this everybody is saying about me is because I'm standing on people that have gone ahead of me in their knowledge and revelation. Walking with people, certain people make you see further. Some of the things you are sweating and struggling about is just an instruction. You're going to hear from somebody. And you don't know how much you don't know until you convert yourself to a student of somebody. So you must seek and relate appropriately with those that have seen and gone ahead of you. All of us relate. The question is, we are very comfortable relating with our peers, which is okay, but invest more time with relationship that will help you see further. Those ones are scarce, but put all energy on those ones. Spend more time with those ones. Put more resources in those relationships. The one among your peers is okay, but those one will keep you at the same level. There are relationships in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 that you do not become sluggish, but imitate, copy the example of those who through faith and patiently narrate the promises. Some people are already what you aspire to be. Some people are ahead of you in what you are trying to be. Some people have done what you are trying to accomplish. Find a way to begin to relate with them. There are some people you like some things in their life. There is something they know that you don't know. Relate with them. They'll begin to tell you the secret. There are people that makes you see. And when you are around them, don't be offended by what you see. Make it a challenge. Something that is possible. Hallelujah. In other words, allow mentoring in your life. Rise to your feet. Are you blessed this morning? Lift those hands up. Rise to your feet and put, lift up those hands. And ask for the Holy Spirit's help in all these areas of what we have talked about this morning. You know the area that the world struck you the most. Ask for divine help. Ask for the spirit of meekness. Fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the course of the week, I was listening to Benny Hinn. He said, I can't trust my heart because I don't know what I will do without the Holy Ghost. He said, I can't trust myself. So you need the help of the Holy Ghost. 
Open your mouth and ask the Lord everywhere you are this morning. Holy Spirit, open my eyes so that I'm not just following a wrong path because it looks good, because it sounds good. Holy Spirit, open me up. Walk with me. Open your mouth and ask Jesus. Ask for the spirit of meekness. Ask for the spirit of meekness. Ask for the spirit of meekness. Ask for the spirit of meekness, spirit of humility, so that the spirit of religion and tradition can be destroyed. Open your mouth and ask Jesus this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. As you remain standing, if you have joined us for service this morning, you have never given your life to Jesus. That is where it begins. You cannot be baptized in the Holy Ghost until you first give your life to Jesus. And all it takes is for you to confess this simple prayer of faith with me. Lord Jesus, I know that you are the Son of God. You died on the cross of Calvary. You gave your life to save my life. The Bible says, if I believe in my heart and I declare with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I will be saved. So I declare that you are the Lord of my life. Write my name in the book of life. I am born again in Jesus' precious name. If you are here this morning, you pray this prayer, you are in the sanctuary, lift up your hands. If for the first time you just give your life to Jesus, lift up your hands. And if you are online, I want you to send a test, yes Jesus, to the number or the email on your screen. Yes Jesus, one word. And send your information to us so that we can follow up with you. I pray that the power of God will keep and establish you in the faith. In Jesus' mighty name. Believers, Christianity is a spiritual journey. The more equipped you are, the more glorious it is. You can be victorious. But we need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And the good news I have for you is that the month, next month, we're going to be looking at the topic of the Holy Ghost extensively. So that by the time that month is over, everybody will be walking with the Holy Ghost like a man walk with his friend. Come and put your hands together for Jesus. Go ahead and put your hands together for Jesus. Lift those hands up now. Receive fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, when you go home, I want you to begin to steer the hunger for the Holy Ghost. You can never have enough or more of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That is the truth. It's a beautiful thing to have as a Christian. The ministry of the Holy Ghost. Number one, you, are not, you don't live in darkness. Number two, you are anointed. Number three, you are walking in revelation. You are walking in knowledge. You are walking in the fullness of what God has in store for you. In Jesus' precious name. I prophesy that your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. Your life will never remain the same in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus, you will not leave this earth until your destiny is fulfilled. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's put our hands together for the Lord as we take our seat. It is time for us.